came across this tweet last week, but the U.S. election was obviously too important to stop to talk about anything else. It's a tweet published by the World Economic Forum, which is the billionaires get together in Davos, Switzerland every year. It's where Trudeau went in January of 2016, right after he was elected for his sit down with George Soros. And Christian Freeland was sitting right there too. I read somewhere that had she not been elected to parliament, she would have gone on to become Soros' personal biographer. So they're pretty tight. And there was Trudeau fully synchronizing with Soros' agenda. It's not a conspiracy theory. Trudeau published the photo himself. And later that year, Trudeau actually signed a contract with George Soros' Open Societies Foundation, contracting with that foreign globalist lobby group to write Canadian immigration and open borders policies. Now, I should tell you the image we're showing you is a cached version. That means a saved version of the Government of Canada webpage of this contract between Soros and Trudeau, because just in the last few months, after having been freely available on the internet for four years, suddenly the Government of Canada deleted that website. That's odd, isn't it? Anyways, my point is this. There are conspiracy theories, and then there are, I don't know, conspiracy facts. And a lot of those are hatched at the World Economic Forum in Davos. It's not a government organization. It has no official powers, but it's where the likes of Justin Trudeau goes to get his marching orders. And to peacock for the world's woke globalists. Uh, incredibly proud uh, to have a partner in my wife Sophie who is uh, extremely committed to women and girls issues but she took me aside a few months ago and said okay uh, it's great that you're engaged and modeling to your daughter that you want her empowered and everything but you need to take as much effort to talk to your sons, my eight-year-old boy and my two-year-old, so a little young still, uh, about how he treats women and how uh, he is going to be grow up to be a feminist just like dad. And by the way, we shouldn't be afraid of the word feminist. Yeah. Men and women mm -hmm. should use it to describe themselves <laughs> anytime they want. I'm not sure if even the folks at Davos still believe, believe that, um, that that groper is a feminist, uh, but they don't care. As long as he follows their direction on everything from the UN's view on global warming, to the UN's view on the coronavirus pandemic, to the UN's view on global migration. They don't care that he gets a bit handsy now and then. Obviously, this is a, a situation that has been very much on my mind over the past uh, few weeks. It's a uh, issue that I have been deeply engaged with, not just as a leader, but all my life since uh, since my early 20s in university, uh, active on issues around sexual assault and uh, and behaviors. I've been uh, reflecting very carefully on what I remember from that incident almost 20 years ago. Uh, and again, I am, I feel, I am confident that I uh, did not act inappropriately. But part of this awakening that we're having as a society, a long awaited uh, realization is that it's not just uh, one side of the story that matters. That the same interactions could be experienced very differently um, from one person to the next. So that's the World Economic Forum and its annual Bacchanalia at Davos, Switzerland. And that's who tweeted this old tweet from 2016, almost exactly four years ago, just after Trump won his first win. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. This is how our world could change by 2030. Read more. As you can see, the date on the bottom there. So that thing was online for four years also, but I'm, I, I went to do my show on it today, and poof, it's gone. It's gone. I can't believe it. And the video is gone too. Just like the Soros press release is gone from that website on the Government of Canada page where it's been for four years. That's weird. Now, similar videos are on other pages, and um, our intrepid producer, Justin, has found a copy that someone had made of the video before it was deleted. I I'm not saying it's deleted from every single place in the world. I just find it weird that, it, that they tweeted it, and that tweet was up for four years, and then it was just taken down last week. I don't know. That's strange, don't you think? So I'm going to show you um, the video that was on that tweet, because I want you to see what they're talking about, those masters of the universe who meet behind closed doors with George Soros and Justin Trudeau. Let me show you the video that was on that link. I'll play it through once and then again with some comments. Here, watch, this is what was deleted after four years online.
<laughs> All right, let's look at that again. Here's the first part. Are those really predictions or is it a prescription? Their plan, their hopes. Pretty clear it's what they want, what they're working towards. Here's the next part. So no property, nothing to keep, nothing to inherit, nothing to bequeath to your own kids, nothing that is a, an expression of you, your work, your beliefs, just stuff that Jeff Bezos will lend to you and until you miss a payment or violate some terms of service or I don't know if the crap breaks down. Imagine owning nothing, not just for the poverty, but not just for the inability to accumulate prosperity for yourself and your family, not just to take away incentives for so much of life, but just the things around us that have meaning, the little things that we own that are ours alone and that have value, not because of their cost, but because they have no price, keepsakes, mementos. What creep thought of no property? I suppose that's a cool way of saying communism? I don't know, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy about it? Even the communists lied. Their motto was peace, land, bread, as in you could have the land, you could have the bread. Only the Soros World Economic Forum would say, you'll get nothing and you'll be happy. Now smile. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.